I almost think of it like eating cookie dough ice cream. If you were to just take out all the pieces of cookie dough, you'd be left with vanilla. Right. And our Art Deco, our history, that's a cookie dough that makes this wonderful ice cream yes. that we all enjoy. Yes, so. yes, yes. Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of Gustavo's World and today again we are with Danielle Ziraldo and the reason why I'm here is because I would like to know more, I mean I know more, but I would like you to know more about what this place is about because it's actually super fascinating. The video is about to start. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. There we go! So, Danielle, what do you do here? Thank you, Gustavo, for visiting. Um, so I'm the executive director of the Miami Design Preservation League. We are an organization started by Barbara Bear Kapiman and friends in 1976. And the mission is to preserve, protect, and promote all of the great things about architecture, preservation, protecting the environment, uh, oh, wow. culture, and all of these things that help make Miami Beach and Miami such a great place to live, work, and play. Yes. So what have we done this, since its creation? For example, because, I mean, the sad story for me is like, for, for example, before the Art Deco, there were like these beautiful Mediterranean buildings, yes. which were demolished uh, with any control, and they were beautiful. Right, right. Yes, and, and they would look good here too. Yes. So they were gone, and then nobody did anything, and, and then the Art Deco was put on top of it, but then, Mm -hmm. You know, like they wanted to do the same thing with the Art Deco, right? Right. Yeah, so um, we have the main styles throughout our city are Mediterranean, yes. Art Deco, and Miami Modern. And what is Miami Modern? Miami Modern is like 50s and 60s. It's oh, very, <laughs> it's very astronaut, yes. outer space related because uh, the landing on the moon and all of that. Yes. Um, but yeah, Miami Beach has, it's basically an encyclopedia of great 20th century architecture. The Mediterranean buildings, we still have many here, but many of them were lost in the great hurricane of 1925. Yes, the right. big blow. Exactly, exactly. Yes. <laughs> and so what happened was after that, uh, you know, the owners were looking at what to replace it. And at that time, the style of Art Deco had come to prominence. And yes. so many of the buildings here were built in a short period of time in one style, which really makes it such a unique concentration in the whole world. Pretty and much. that is really part of our, our legacy and what we try to protect. Yes. We don't, you know, chain ourselves to buildings anymore, but like, <laughs> like our predecessors may have, but we do, you know, in spirit, we are we are really the voice of the buildings that don't have a voice. Right. As Commissioner Mark Samuelin, who recently passed away, he yes. said that at one of our events in February that, you know, that we are the voice of the buildings. And I, I thought that was a beautiful way to describe yeah. what we do. So we do that in many ways. We have educational programs. We have our daily walking tours with wonderful tour guides. We have our Art Deco Museum, which has permanent as well as temporary exhibitions all year round. And uh, of things related to, you know, Art Deco and our mission, environment, right. culture, arts. And um, we do our Art Deco Weekend Festival every January, where we uh, have a, a marketplace and live music and, all sorts of fun activities. Yeah, for the they community. are fun actually. If you could ever be in town for that, that's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. We also do advocacy, so we go to the commission and we advocate to make sure our laws are among the strongest in the country. Uh, and so that is something that takes continual education. What does that mean? Education. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why most of these buildings are still here is because there are rules and regulations right. governing what could be built and what has to be maintained. Uh, but those rules could be changed in the future, you know, if there is a lack of knowledge by 
uh, the city or well, look the at rest. the abortion. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, right. So, yeah. so that's why it's very important that we continue in our role educating the public that Art Deco is an economic driver, yes. that historic preservation is a big a reason why people enjoy being here, visiting right. here, living here. And so we're always trying to work on additional incentives to, right. to help drive our economy forward. Right. I mean, if you think about it, Miami Beach is a beautiful island and, uh, you know, has a lot of palm trees that are not from here, but somehow we have them. But then without these buildings, it, it wouldn't be the same. It would just be like any other beach city. Right. But we're different people. Yeah, and yes. when you think about, you know, why did our basil come here? Why is this kind of in Florida, like such an economic center? Right. You know, we're not... You mean aisles. lately after COVID? No, no. I mean, Even our before? basil came here in 2001. Right. No, that know? one. But I'm, I, I was thinking about all these new companies that are coming actually to... They're not going to Orlando. They're not going to right. Tampa. That's true. They're that, coming here. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I'm not as aware of the latest trend, but I know that oh over the years, yes. this has become more and more of a culture, arts and culture hub. Yes. And, you know, we think that it's a, a, an amazing dynamic place, but that we have to always remind people to keep the essence. I almost think of it like eating cookie dough ice cream. If you were to just take out all the pieces of cookie dough, you'd be left with vanilla. Right. And our Art Deco, our history, that's a cookie dough that makes this wonderful ice cream yes. that we all enjoy. Yes, so yes, yes. It's a passion for so many of our volunteers and our staff and our board members. And uh, it's something that's very important, we think, for uh, continued uh, stewardship. So Yes. What was the name of the guy that um, that created the palette of a quarter of a Leonard Horowitz. Yes. And he was one of the co-founders along with Barbara Kaplan. Right. Unfortunately, he died of AIDS, and um, but not before he left his amazing color palette. Right. That is still very much in vogue today. Right. Um, you know, probably it became most famous when Miami Vice adopted it. Right. And really, it, it just made that whole show what it was. As I was as thinking, as you were talking, I was like, it was all because of Miami Vice, but you know, Right. I mean, mainly they were the eyes for, you know, for the world. Yeah, and watching, yeah. watching the old Miami Vice shows is fun because you yeah. see a lot of the neighborhood yes. and how it's improved over time. Right. Um, but yeah, there's like a cool vibe that when you mix in the, the beach, the palm trees, the architecture, the colors, and us. <laughs> and the people. <laughs> and a couple of yes. astronauts. Yeah. And um, all is good. So, you know, that's what we do. And we think um, we're always advocating for culture, for more, you know, funding, even for other cultural institutions, because most of our cultural institutions are housed in historic buildings. So we see it as a big part of who we are as a city to encourage museums, cultural institutions, cultural events right. to keep our city moving forward in a, a, a cultural-based way. Because it would be very easy for us to be like Cancun or or other places right. that, or Fort Lauderdale, you know. Right. But there's some, some essence here that we're all attracted to that we think uh, is important to maintain. Right. And there is, I mean, this has nothing to do with this, but Miami and Miami Beach, they have energy vortexes that we're not aware of, but they are here. Interesting. I was yes. just watching Stranger <laughs> I was watching Stranger Things, <laughs> and yeah, maybe there's like one of the, have you seen that? Yeah. One of those vortexes in the sky. I don't know, yeah. but... Uh, well, there are, I mean, seriously. Yeah. But usually those vortexes are created because of subterranean crosses of water. Interesting. And then when the water goes, 
then it creates, you know, wow. and we have a lot of that here. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, in South Florida. That's why it's just so interesting. Yeah, no, it's yeah. definitely, there's a lot of energy here and all you have to do is walk around and yeah, see Yeah, you feel it. it. You feel it and yeah. people, I love also the diversity. We have people from all over the world. Yes. <laughs> and it's one of the few places left really where people from, you know, whether you're very wealthy or not very wealthy or you're black or white, or, or Jewish, or, or gay, and, yeah. or, what, or whatever you are. Uh, people somehow find a way to coexist. coexist. And that was my dream, to live in a place like that, you know? Right. And you know, the city, because it went through being like a very older Jewish, and then it went into super gay, and then it went into something else, and then and we're getting back into being all of us together again, which yeah. is great. And social media, I think, has helped with that right. too. We're kind of like Madonna, we're always evolving. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so, and then, was it really difficult for Barbara, for example, at the beginning when she created this? I wonder if she even knew that in the year 2023, her efforts would be still sustained. I mean, to think about it, she would think that, because if I think about me in my YouTube channel will be still happening in 2080. You're right. You know, when people they... might be watching this video in 200 years. <laughs> yes, yeah. because I know. Hi, people. We're dead, but you know, we love you. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I think that Barbara, I hope she would be proud. I think she would be proud yes, would. of that, of what, she, you know, really she did and we're just carrying it on. But one thing that's really interesting is that we're in the process of digitizing all of her archives. And so we're wow. gonna be making that available to the public. And I've seen a lot of it and it's very exciting because a lot of people don't realize that not only did she help save Art Deco in Miami Beach, but she and Leonard Horowitz went on a road trip throughout the United States to different towns and cities that she knew had Art Deco in order to encourage them to save their yeah. Art Deco. Did now work? we have Art Deco societies around the world. New York oh. City, Empire State Building, you know, right. Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco. We have a Buenos Aires, um, really? Paris. Yeah, uh, so not only did she help save Miami Beach's Art Deco, but now if you go around the world, there's even now in Mumbai, uh, wow. India, there's yeah, yeah. a great Art Deco society there. And, and um, it's just so inspiring to see these other communities that have their own unique Art Deco style. Right. Just like we have tropical Art Deco and it's very in tune with the surroundings. Right. You know, Mumbai's Art Deco is different than Paris's Art Deco. Right. Israel has the Bauhaus and Art Deco, the White City, um, and even Africa. We had um, Asmara, uh, which is uh, the first World Heritage UNESCO site in yeah. Africa. And so, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like a mini United Nations of Art Deco. Yes, I love so, it. It's fun. <laughs> this <Yeah>. is fun. <laughs> yes, and then uh, through these videos, you're also going to start seeing uh, the, you know, we already have the history of Miami Beach. We have that, it's, you know, it's happening in little episodes because it's too long. It's too long and too vast. Then we have the gay history of Miami Beach. We have the Jewish history of Miami Beach. But then we're going to have an architectural explanation about with Julie about all of the buildings oh, okay. yes like I mean every in the in the pure detail it's gonna be really cool that's great yeah, yeah she is an amazing guide and um, there's so much knowledge that you know we <laughs> need know. to share with everybody and yes. thank you Gustavo for helping yes. raise awareness for our heritage because you know without it we're just vanilla ice cream <laughs> We're not vanilla ice cream ever. <laughs> so anyway, so Daniel, thank you for explaining what this amazing institution does because, you know, I kind of knew, but now I'm even more knowledgeable and all of you too. Well, thank you so much thank you, for being Lisa. here again. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, thank you so much again for watching Gustavo's World. I hope that you enjoyed this video with Danielle. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to comment all you want, because with your comments, all of us learn a lot of things and we keep those videos coming up in the searches. So thank you so much and see you next time. See you later. <laughs>